So what am I doing driving a Model S? All right, good morning guys. Welcome back to the channel. So today's video, I am bringing the Tesla into Tesla of Highland Park for that, uh, that small rust spot to have that taken care of. Now, for those of you that don't know the background of this, let me lay it out for you. A couple of months back, get out of my car and um, I was at a customer's house in their driveway and he was asking me about the car and I noticed underneath the driver's mirror there was a, uh, a small looked like a dirt spot on the corner of the uh, of the panel of the left front fender and uh, the uh, the fenders the front fenders on Model 3s come up to a point just sort of below and slightly in front of each of the the side view mirrors and apparently the point of that fender was that fender was pulled in and that corner was actually touching the body of the car and just over the time of owning the car i think i had 52,000 miles on it at the time i've got 62,000 on it now but uh, at that point it was uh, it had finally rubbed through the paint and there was a really tiny about um, match head size maybe four millimeter diameter uh, three sixteenths of an inch diameter uh, rust spot right between the corner of that panel and the car. It looked like the panel itself was rusting on the edge a tiny bit as well as the body of the car. So a little bit of drama. I, I posted a video on this and it uh, kind of went crazy. I had a hundred and eighty something thousand views I think. It was picked up by by various online news sources that Teslas are rusting and, and it was it was quite a big thing. Uh, I had um, I had quite a time policing all of the comments and, and it, it just got crazy. Well, I contacted Tesla, obviously, and now I was out of warranty at the time and the um, I discussed it with them at length and for those of you that are curious, uh, Teslas have a very, uh, very lengthy uh, warranty on rust, however, it is rust perforation, which would be hole through a panel, and it specifically says if caused uh, by rusting from the inside out. Now, I don't know how you could tell that. I'm not a body and fender man, but that is their warranty. Uh, besides that, I was out of my, my normal bumper-to-bumper -bumper warranty, and I spoke with two different people from Tesla. I spoke with John. A uh, really good guy. He's a viewer of the channel and Dennis from the service department and Dennis now <laughs> is a viewer of the channel. I had sent them pictures of it and discussed it with him at length and I said, you know as well as I do, this didn't start, I was only 2,000 miles out of warranty. I said, you know this didn't start out of warranty. This started the day I got the car. So I said, it, it, it did happen under warranty. I said, but even though I'm out of warranty, I said, this is, this is a manufacturing, it's a build defect in the car. And he said, I agree. So he discussed it with his, um, his superiors there and they agreed to fix it. And there was a, I, I've done a couple of videos on this, just updates on how it's going. And there was a, a bit of a hullabaloo back and forth on the channel about, well, of course they should fix it. And some people are saying that they're only fixing it because I have a YouTube channel and they want the exposure. Other people are like, no, they're, it's a goodwill thing and they do goodwill stuff all the time and there's there's just i i heard you know opinions left and right back and forth are they doing it because of the, the presence of my channel as uh, within this mix i don't know maybe uh here's the thing though even if they are well that's fine i mean i you guys can at least if nothing else watch as i go through the process so it was uh, it was a bit uh, time consuming. I brought the car uh, in to have it looked at. Then I brought it uh, back in and they um, uh, to have the body shop look at it and arrange an appointment. Today is that appointment. So it uh, so at this point I'm going in ooh, a little bit of slip there. So today I am going into Tesla in Highland Park and they will bring the car into the body shop and begin the process. I love it. I have slip start enabled so um, it softens the traction control and allows a small amount of slip 
So for those of you also that don't know, this is a long range rear wheel drive Model 3. It is not an all wheel drive car. So it definitely does slip a little bit. <laughs> I'm purposely trying to, trying to slip. I enjoy driving in the winter time and I'll purposely slide the car around a bit. It keeps my, uh, my skills sharp, so to speak. So anyway, uh, it is a snowy day. We got three inches of snow last night and um, I really only live about 35 minute drive away from Highland Park Tesla, but this morning when I got up and set the, uh, uh, the nav, it set an hour and 15 minutes based on traffic. So, yep, it's gonna be a bit of a long drive. They're gonna be giving me a, uh, a loaner. So I'm curious to see what that is. I drive 160 miles a day and in the winter when you use the heat and that, uh, the uh, <laughs> range becomes an issue. So I really hope I don't get a, a short range car because uh, that will uh, drastically hamper my ability to do my job. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, uh, I'm on the road and I'll keep you guys posted. All right, so even though it's nasty out and you really can't see lane lines to speak of, Autopilot's working just fine. Uh, it says lane departure avoidance limited, but uh, you can see that Autopilot is fully engaged and uh, it's tracking just fine. So uh, there's kind of a bummer someone in the ditch. You know, I find it ironic. It sure does seem like the cars I see in the ditch uh, these days are on straight roads, not even on corners, so kind of strange. Anyway, yeah, autopilot's working great in this nasty weather. All right, so uh, it's taken me an hour and 45 minutes <laughs> to drive basically 20 miles. Should have been about a 35, 40 minute drive at the most, but uh, I'm about half hour late for my appointment and I am rolling up to Highland Park Tesla now. Let's see. My wipers are uh, wipers are all crusted up. All right. Here we are, Highland Park Tesla. All right. Let's head inside and see what uh, see what they got for me. All right. So the loaner that they gave me is a 90D. Not sure what year it is, but uh, yeah, this is uh, this is a fast car. Uh, it's not a P. It's just a just a standard uh, non-performance 90D, but uh, pretty quick car. I like it. Obviously, the UI is a little bit different, but still very intuitive uh, compared to uh, to the Model Three. The fact that my screen is lowered and pitched to the side, I got to tell you, it is it it has a very similar feel. To this long screen that's uh, that's in the Model S, and um, you know I gotta say, so far I, I've been in the car for just a handful of miles. It is, um, yeah, very very nice car. Um, I don't know what to say. It drives like a Tesla. It feels a lot like my Model Three. It's obviously a bigger car, heavier car. I don't know if I like the screen vertical like this. So. What the uh, Tesla service department told me was that my car would be in probably through Friday. It doesn't really matter to me. I've got this uh, Model S as a loaner. So kind of curious to see how it goes. Uh, again, as I said earlier in the video, Tesla is taking care of this for me uh, in goodwill. So uh, so throughout, uh, throughout this week, the next couple videos, you'll see me in this Model S. And uh, yeah, kind of an interesting, uh, interesting experience so far going from my Model 3 to the S. This car obviously has more features. It has the gauge binnacle in front of me, has a high dash. I'd say that you have a little bit more of the king of the road feel in this car than you do with the Model 3, although this is a very large car. I'll say that this thing reminds me a lot of my wife's 2014 uh, Ford Fusion. Uh, that is uh, an all-wheel drive car, and uh, it's a decent car, relatively powerful. Uh, this thing is in a league far beyond uh, that car in features and power and all that, but I, they have a similar uh, road feel, I guess you'd say. They're a similar size car, and um, so 
I, I'd say this car feels like a cross between my Model 3 and my wife's Ford Fusion. So, interesting situation. It'll be, uh, I'll be curious to see how it goes this week working in this car. And uh, it, it's got a lot more space than my Model 3, so I can put uh, boxes of parts and my toolbox and whatnot pretty easily in this car. So, a couple differences I've noticed. I have a low tire pressure warning. The left two tires are at 40 PSI. Uh, the Model 3 doesn't give low tire warning until it's 36 PSI, I think. Anyway, but these are 40 PSI and I'm getting a low tire pressure warning. So that's interesting. I'll have to air the tires up. This is obviously the first time this car has been out in this, this cold weather. Uh, tire pressure's dropped a little bit, but so all in all, interesting situation, uh, getting my uh, the rust fixed on my car. So what do you guys think? I mean, our, uh, what are your guesses as far as uh, you know the rest of the car? I don't see any other issues, uh, rust spots or anything else, any paint problems on my car, but I know other people have them. So anyway, uh, that's it for today. I've got a couple other interesting videos coming up here soon. We'll be some, doing some winter driving in the little smart electric drive. I'm looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, so anyway, you guys have yourselves a wonderful day and uh, see you soon.